Alright guys, today I will overhaul the 2.2 diesel Skyactiv engine. I've performed all the verifications, inspections and measurements at this stage, so everything is within the specifications. And no machining is needed. All the replacement parts and cleaning have been prepared, and what's left is to put it back together. I will include the following. All the tightening torques, essential points to look at, step-by-step -step process of reassembling, part numbers needed for this job, you will have a general overview of engine construction. So I started by thoroughly cleaning all the oil channels. It is not shown here, but the main idea is to wash the engine and blow out all the possible openings. The assembly process is precise and all the parts need to be kept clean. I have already fitted new main bearings with those featuring grooves placed in the upper engine block and those without on the opposite side. The truss bearings, which were in perfect condition, were reused and placed on the upper part of the engine block. Here we have required specifications and the way of truss bearing measurement. The engine block was also sandblasted to improve its appearance. There I have another engine to work with in the future. Here we have the crankshaft with its nominal dimensions, the nominal dimensions of the crankshaft, main pins, crank pins and others will be included in the video. Here is the crankshaft right after the removal. Those greyish stripes remained from old bearings. I re removed most of them with a stripe of sandpaper 3K grit and then measured them with a positive result. The lower and upper engine block surfaces are meticulously prepared by removing contamination before applying the liquid gasket. Here I am using Mazda's recommended stuff, applying a thin layer, approximately 3mm thickness, ensuring a secure and reliable seal. Carefully place the lower engine block into dwelling pins and ensure the liquid seal is not interrupted. The first step of tightening is to enable the seating of the lower block to be correct. Apply oil to bolt threads, tighten them to 14 Nm and loosen them. After tightening all the bolts, verify that the silicon sealant protrudes to the inside of the engine, the rear oil seal pressing part and around the engine. This step is crucial for ensuring a proper seal.
we had a vehicle with oil leaks due to the lower engine block not being correctly seated. As you can see, a visible gap exists between the lower and upper engine blocks. Leakage was visible on the front and rear part of the engine as well. Let's get to the pistons. As you can see, I am reusing them. The cleaning process was lengthy. I used a lot of carburetor cleaner soft wire brushes to clean the pistons cart. Old piston rings to scrape off the thick carbon composite of piston ring grooves and a lot of time. Every piston incorporates three rings, the first, the second and the oil ring. The top of the piston ring is laser engraved, but depending on the brand it can also be written top. Some brands do not mark the rings, so I'm attaching a cutaway view of each piston ring. At this stage I am measuring the piston ring gap. To do so I apply a thin oil film to the cylinder wall. The ring should be measured by being pressed into the cylinder 50 mm from the top of the engine block. I am using the piston to push in the ring. Measure each of the piston ring and gaps using a filler gauge. Try not to move the piston ring while taking measurements. The first ring standard ring gap is 0.20 to 0.25 of a millimeter. And at the last measurement I am using 0.30 to confirm if the gap is not bigger. The dimensions will be given in the further part of the video. The standard cylinder bore diameter measurement at the depth of 50.6 mm from the top of the engine is 86 to 86.022 mm. 